Welcome to the Cherry Active YouTube channel. Due to popular demand and the volume of questions we received for Paul Todd's video that we did last year, we decided to invite him back into our offices and conduct a more in-depth interview with him, talking more about the aspects of his diet, the supplements that he uses within his diet, and his plans for the future. This video was taken shortly after Paul had returned from the World Championships in the US, where he finished second in the middleweight class. So, a big congratulations to Paul from the Cherry Active team, and we hope you enjoyed the video. Basically, when you get to uh, mid, mid 40s like myself, it's, uh, it's getting basically back up to weights that you know you can go to without injuring yourself. So, for me, um, I knew I was at my maximum of uh, weights on the, on the big power movements anyway, squats, bench press, uh, I don't deadlift anymore because back problems, but all the major power movements apart from squats really. So what you do is you, you keep going as heavy as you can into the diet and then once you get so far into the diet you, your body's getting weaker so you just have to give in to it slightly but try and stay as heavy as you can on the first exercise of each body part and then it's more about conditioning after that yeah. the closer you get to the show really. The training's great, I enjoy the training, but the diet, I, no one likes the diet, it's always difficult, but the momentum of the diet picks up as you go along, so the closer you're getting, the more your body changes back, um, the more you, you get detail, the more in set you get and the more mindset you get, you're like in a tunnel almost, and you know the walls are closing in the tunnel more as you go along. So. I, yeah, a friend of mine gave me a, a hamstring workout. We changed where normally I would do legs all in one day, and I've done it for years. It was suggested that I split hamstrings from quads, and that's what we did. And we, yeah, there was there was changes, and going into the future, there should be quite considerable changes to my hamstrings because it's always been a bit of a weak point. Depends how you're looking as you're going along. Everybody. For me, I feel everybody that competes needs somebody that they can go to so that they get an outside view of what they're looking like, but an honest view, not not, not people telling you what, what you want to hear, but if you're not ready, you need to be told, look, you're not ready, don't get on stage. And last year I did do a show and really I didn't take a lot of advice on board and didn't look my best at the beginning of last year's season. So. For me, it's my own view in my, what I feel I look like, and then going along to uh, a friend of mine, Keith Fox, who always gives me an, an outside view, someone who's been a judge in the past um, at bodybuilding shows, and he gives an honest opinion. He doesn't say all the things you want to hear. Sometimes it's not very nice to hear that you've been dieting for months and you're not ready. Uh, so going into that, we were, Really, with that first show, we didn't really make the proper decision until about a week before, week, ten days before. And where did you come in that warm-up well, show? I come second in that one. Uh, I come in second to the Bantamweight World Champion in the other 40s, which I was pleased with. I was pleased. It was good. Okay, the diet consists of six meals. Breakfast is porridge, water orange juice, one banana, and then I go to work with a freezer box personally, so there's going to be two small tins of tuna, uh, dry, I, I normally go with rice, I won't even bother with the weights because everybody's body weight is going to be different, so the weights of the foods are relevant. Salad, two small yogurts, another banana, another orange juice, and then, the, so that'd be three meals spread out. Obviously tuna rice, one yogurt, tuna rice, orange juice, banana, you know, etc. And then at night time there's, it's gonna be uh, chicken or steak. And then you'll, you'll have a sweet potato and it can either be salad or, or, or vegetables, normally vegetables, even if they're frozen. And then you, you, you can, you can, in the off season, 
have things like low, low fat rice pudding. But the sacrifice is the sacrifice of the food. The food for me is that basis of that off season diet, but you've taken out all the extras. So you are just left with the porridge and the orange juice. You're left with the tuna rice salad and the orange juice. You're, you're left with chicken breast at night and just the veg, no carbs. So it's the repetitiveness of the food, it's the mundaneness of the food. Some people must like it, but for me, eating the same thing for six months, you know, and then other people do find it that they can work out the calories and they can have different things each day. I've found if you just stick with the foods that you can eat every day, which I can eat tuna, chicken, porridge and such like, you've just got to stick to it because you know if you if you take a little bit away, even if it's half an ounce, you know you're going to lose a bit more weight. So you know that the weights, it's the same thing every day. And then it's the social life as well, shutting your social life down. Obviously you can't drink alcohol when you're dieting for a competition. I'm sure there's some people that are going to tell me they do, but oh, you know, it's just extra calories again. And towards the end of a diet, it's so di difficult because the regime of the CV twice a day, the, the hard training, the fact that you're on limited calories, and the fact that the carbs are being cut out at a certain time in the day as well. You know, you can't go out clubbing. You can't. I've been in the cinema and fallen asleep before, halfway through James Bond films and such like. So it's it's difficult. You you've just got to focus. You've got to keep telling yourself that. You can do all them things after, and uh, and you've really got to want it. I mean, you've got to want to go to the show. You've got you've you've got to want it, really. If you don't want it, then why are you sacrificing all that, really? Mm. Yeah, the, the supplements consist of two proteins powders. So so you've got a slow releasing one you'd have in the morning and just before you go to bed. Uh, the morning one would be with the porridge and the one at the night time would be just with water. Then you're looking at creatine, which would be, again, before and after training for recovery. Udo's oil, which would be, for me, I, I always have it on my food because I enjoy the taste of it. Vitamin C, three times a day, preferably a slow release in one. And then uh, during a, uh, a build up to a show of CLA tablets to try and hold on to a, a bit of the muscle while you're really dieting down. Branch chain aminos before and after training again for recovery while you're on reduced calories. ZMA at night time for, for recovery while you're, I mean everything's recovery based for, uh, for supplementation. And also Cherry Active which would, for me, I, I add it into my protein powder and uh, straight after training, and and I and I also have the tablet before I go to bed as well. Okay. I mean the benefits of uh, the, the the recovery really. You know, I mean the, the soreness is less, uh, and the recovery period, and then everything's based around a recovery period because what what people tend to forget is that most efforts of guys, uh, you know, we all know where some of them have been, and you know, they're not natural guys and, and people are just looking at them and thinking if they take that supplement they're going to look like that particular guy. Forget all that, it's got to be the recovery. The quicker you recover, the quicker you can get back in the gym to work out again. And the quicker you're recovering, the more, the, basically the bigger, you, you know, the bigger you're going to get, the stronger you're going to get, you know, the more results you're going to get. The future for me immediately would be a, a year off to get back to heavy training and then I'll be looking at doing the Open British Final again, doing my best in that and abroad will, will, will be, I've been in, basically given the all clear to go, will be the uh, Mr Universe in Barbados with the IMBF. After that there are a few other things I'd like to do and then really I'll be hanging the trunks up and in my early 50s, we'll get more actively involved in helping people get ready for shows, especially natural shows, um, with potential and basically the, the, the headstrong type of guy, Simon. 
that uh, want to do the shows and then I can live through them really because for me it's, it's you know to hang on to hang on for me personally some people get away with it well but for me I think once I hit my early 50s I'd like to think I'd walk away without people looking back and thinking I look better a few years before so so that's that's the future for me.